piano. Way beyond your own camera. <laughs> My name is Teresa Moisey, and uh, I'm a minister at the Folks and Neighborhoods here at Harrow United Church in the Crescentwood neighborhood of Winnipeg. So glad to have those who are here in person, and glad to have those who may be watching with us online or when you watch this later in a recorded version. Harrow United Church is located on Treaty One land. It is the traditional
we welcome to you grace and peace. Welcome grace and peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to you if you uh, struggle through snow to get here in person. Welcome to you if you're tired from shoveling snow. Welcome to you if you are in sunny Arizona or some other completely different climate. Welcome to you if you are old or young, maybe a little bit of age. If you are gay or straight, queer or questioning this or why. Welcome to you if you are doubting or believing or a little bit of each. Welcome this day. We're going to join in singing together. This is our mass. Come on uh, here in person and at home you can sing your heart first. Come in, come in and sit down. You are a part of the prayer to begin. It is, give you, it is good to give you thanks, O God, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to tell of your love in the morning and your faithfulness during the night. With a ten-string lute and harp, with voice and lyre together, for you, O God, have made me glad by your work. I shout for joy at the works of your hands. It is good to give you thanks, O God, to sing praises to your name. Amen. Birthday and anniversary blessings. Um, this is something we haven't been able to do in person for a long time. And I don't think there's, is there anyone here today that has a birthday or anniversary? No. But I do know, I want to tell you about uh, yesterday, there was a birthday party here in the upper hall, a gathering of family and a few friends for Rita, who is turning 80 on Wednesday. And let me tell you, Rita looked pretty good as she was schlepping the food in and out and helping set up up there. So we want to acknowledge Rita's birthday, a new friend. And we want to acknowledge Maddie's birthday because uh, Maddie and Hannah and Zach and family uh, might join us the next time we're going live, but this weekend they're busy celebrating Maddie's birthday. 
So for Maddie and Hannah, has anybody else got any birthdays to note? All right. For Maddie and for Hannah, this blessing is for you. With you, we give thanks to God for all that blesses your life, for family, for friends, for celebrations. And we give thanks to God for the blessing that you are, for the ways in which your light and love shine forth in the world. And we pray that today and in the days to come, you will know God's power to protect you, God's presence to watch over you, God's light to lead you, God's hand to hold you, God's strength to fill you, God's courage and God's love to be made known in you. Amen. And we'll sing the reading. So again, ask Will to come forward. There's no, there's no, there's no conversation on the steps because that was going to be, for, for people who find it easy to get up and down on steps. A prayer for grace. Greater God, as we read your word today, please help us to know love and understand you better and help us to apply your word in our lives. Amen. The first reading is Luke 17 verses 20 to 21, the coming of the kingdom. Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming and he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed. Nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. And the second is Luke 18, verses 31 to 34. Jesus foretells his death and resurrection a third time. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem. And everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be handed over to the Gentiles, and he will be mocked and insulted and spat upon. After they have flogged him, they will kill him, and on the third day he will rise again. But they understood nothing about all these things. In fact, what he said was hidden from them. And they did not grasp what was said. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Seems like it's always a surprise. We, we knew that winter was coming, didn't we? We knew there'd be snow and ice because that's what there is when winter comes. We knew that it might be hard to get around. We knew we should get our winter tires put on and perhaps we did those things. And yet it seems like it's always a surprise. I think we're getting used to it. We're into what, day four now or something like that? But it was only a week ago where we were wondering if we really needed to pull those tomato plants out of the garden. It always seems to come as a surprise, not just to me. I've, I've been talking to lots of people. It's like, yeah, we knew it was coming. We read the forecast, but man, it's winter, isn't it? Well, 
That's kind of like how it was when Jesus was trying to explain things to people. Quite often it was kind of like, I think we've been through this before. As Will just read for us, now for the third time, Jesus mentioned that there were going to be hard times ahead. And it wasn't just that, that he had to mention more than once. It was all kinds of things. There are a few stories, for example, one of which was our scripture last week, about um, what's the greatest commandment. And in some of them, it's Jesus being asked and he answers. And in some of them, it's, uh, it's he says, what do you think, as, as was the scripture last week, and gets someone else to answer. And then says, you have answered well. It's amazing how often we have to learn things over and over again. And it was a surprise, even at the very end, I think, for those who were closest to him, that his arrest and death should come. Even at that last meal, when they were celebrating the Passover, they were surprised. Surprised when he talked about, in a little while you will see me no longer. Surprised, perhaps, even when the troops arrived and arrested him a little later as they were praying in the garden. It always seems to come as a surprise, even when we're expecting it. The other thing that Jesus talked about, the other thing that perhaps often comes as a surprise, is what he called the kingdom of God. Some days we call it the realm of heaven, or the realm of God. Sometimes people refer to it as the kingdom of God, trying to get away from the image of uh, masculine rulers who lord it over us. He talked about the realm of God often, and he used parables quite often, didn't he? The kingdom of God will be like a mustard seed. When it's planted, it grows in from a very large, a very small seed into a large bush. The kingdom of God will be like a woman who's lost a coin, and she puts everything aside and searches her whole house until she finds it. And then she calls everyone to celebrate. The kingdom of God will be like that wayward child who went away and like a profligate, wasted all his share of the family wealth and wasted his youth and his health, but then came home and was welcomed when he wanted to come back and be part of the family. The kingdom of God will be like the shepherd who goes out and looks for the lost sheep kingdom of God. You know, some of us with this weather probably have kept a screensaver on our computers or on our tablets or even on our phones to remind us of our geraniums, our gardens at home, to remind us maybe of playing in some water with some grandchildren or children. Or maybe there are other things that you keep as your screensaver your, uh, your desktop and your devices. Those are a bit like the stories that Jesus told. He told the parables and we tell the other stories of him interacting with others to remind us. When the winter storms hit, we need to remember we had a beautiful summer with lots of beautiful flowers. When times get difficult, we need to remember our family, our friends, those who make our lives worth living. When times get tough for Jesus and his disciples, he wants them to remember this. What he told the Pharisees, when will the kingdom of God come, they said. He says, it's here. It's in your midst already. So when we're surprised by the harshness of life, whether it's the weather outside or whether it's the weather inside or whether it's other circumstances. When it comes as a surprise, even maybe when we knew it was coming, we look for those stories. We look for those photographs. We look for those things that remind us. God gives us the gift of presence here every day 
everywhere. So, whether it's on your screensaver, whether it's on your uh, home screen, whether it's in your mind's eye or in your heart, may the power of God give you the opportunity to see the kingdom of God in our midst so that we might draw from that the strength to bring that image and that light and that life to all the world. May God be with us, not just to be comforted, but to be reminded, to dream, to seek, to notice, to create, and to share Jesus' dream of the kingdom of God. So what would be the echoes of Jesus' words today? The kingdom of God is like this. Can we think of some of those? In Haiti, as strife overruns the country and panic and despair are rampant, is there somewhere that someone is showing or saying the kingdom of God is like this? In Ethiopia, the Tigray region and elsewhere, is there an example the kingdom of God is like this. Some of the stories that we've been hearing very recently are of folks who have fled Afghanistan and who were friends of Canadians, Americans, who worked for non-governmental organizations or Canadian partners, worked with our military. The kingdom of God is like in the midst of death threats. Some people got together and found a way to bring them to safety. People in Canada, for sure, people in other countries, people within their own country who sheltered them, found them safe spaces, shepherded them across borders. The kingdom of God is like this. Voices that speak up in the face of racism. The kingdom of God is when clean water comes to Shoal Lake 40 First Nation. The kingdom of God is joy and peace and hope. So in the face of the storms of life, the winter storms, the storms within, the storms in our world, hang on to those images. You know, that picture of you on the golf course or pictures of your children or the picture of the reunion of the Afghan refugees with their Canadian friends. The kingdom of God is not just to be dreamed about, but to be sought, to be noticed, to be shared, to be created. Behold, the kingdom of God is in your midst. Thanks be to God. And we are, uh, there is no, um, thanks Karen. Karen's running the PowerPoint, keeping me on track here. There is no uh, receiving of the offering as we don't want to be encouraging folks to be handling things in common. Uh, but I know that many of you continue to support Harrow and its work and ministry financially and with your time and your energy and your telephone calls and all the other ways in which you do that. So for all of that, thanks be to God. And you take this opportunity to say to God, we give to you all that we have and all that we are because we are grateful people, grateful for all that we have and all that we are. And so we give it to you that it may be used so that your realm might be made known more fully. And we sing a dedication. Grant us, God, the grace of giving.
a time of prayer. We bring our hurts and our hopes, our joy and our sorrow, our silence and our song. And we'll begin by singing. Lord, listen to your children pray. of joy for birthdays, those who are 80 and those who haven't yet hit double digits. Hear us with gratitude for all that life gives to us, for safety, for home, for warmth, and for the opportunities to praise you, for the gifts of music and musicians. the gifts of friends, the gift of technology. For this and so much more, we bring you our thanks, our praise, our gratitude, and may that gratitude show forth in our lives. Because we know that you are stronger, wiser, more compassionate, than anything we can ask or imagine. We bring to you now our prayers for those burdens that are too heavy for us to bear alone, our prayers for ourselves, for others, and for our world. We bring to you our prayers for Tessa Blakey Whitecloud as she transitions from the position of Executive Director at One Just City into a new position at Silo Mission. We bring our prayers for One Just City and its outreach ministries for its staff, its volunteers, its guests, and for the ministry that will continue there and for Glynis, who will be the interim executive director. We bring to you our prayers for Elizabeth. Can you go back a screen, please? For Elizabeth, as she uh, prepares for a surgical procedure tomorrow, we bring our prayers for Vilma and her family. Vilma is on her way to Trinidad to to remember her, hmm, um, to remember her, her sister who has died recently. We bring to you our prayers for the family and friends of Christy Kreitz grieving her death. 
for family and friends grieving the death of Hugo Moll. For Joyce Karlowski's mother. Our prayers for those living in conflict and war zones. Family and friends grieving the death of Bonnie Owen, including AJ, Kathleen, Matthew, and the rest of the family. And we bring to you our prayers for those whose names are written on our hearts and whose names we speak with our lips for all who are ill and all who are alone, all who are frightened. And these and all our prayers we bring to you in the name of Jesus as together we sing an echo of the prayer that he taught. May the God of hope go with us every day, filling all our lives with love and joy and peace. May the God of justice speed us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Let's stand. We're able. <laughs> God of hope, the God of peace, the God of justice, the God of love. Surround you, keep you, lead you, fill you, and spill out into all the world today and every day. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.